Do you have a story to share with the world? Of course you do. We all have stories to share. An Anchor podcast allows you to share your interests in a way that connects to others all across the globe. If you have been considering starting your own podcast and don't know where to begin, Anchor makes it easy to record, edit, and publish with the click of a button. You can even add music. Whether it's crime dramas, self-improvement, paranormal adventures, or tips about parenting, you too can share your unique imprint on the world. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. You've got this. I believe in you. Welcome to the Existential Empath Podcast. My name is Tanya, and I am an intuitive empath. My intention is to share valuable tools and techniques that I have learned so you can tap into your own inner healer naturally and intuitively. Welcome back, everyone. So I've had this thought on my mind for about a week now, and I thought I would jump on here and do a quick podcast about it. And I want to talk about how we have to learn or relearn how to go with the flow. And many of us have been taught at a very young age that we have to force things or we have to chase after things or we have to go get them. Uh, And really that's going against the grain of our organic or natural way that our energy works within our systems. And this has been hard for me. This has been something that I have been really working on. uh, And it takes a lot of faith and a lot of trust to sit back and surrender and allow things to come to you or allow you to align with the certain things that you desire in your life. So I just got off uh, a podcast with James Pearson, Uh, all we think we create. And we were talking about one of his meditations and we were speaking about alignment and how we can sense or feel when we are in alignment and when clarity is uh, presented within our lives. And he had made a comment to me because we were supposed to do this meditation about two weeks ago. Well, something had come up with him and he had to cancel it. And he felt this overwhelmingly sense of kind of guilt uh, or frustration for having to cancel our show. But that week I had been very busy. And honestly, when I woke up that morning, I kind of thought to myself, gosh, I wish that I could do this on Monday, you know, instead of today, because I am just tired and I'm not sure I have the energy to do this. Well, when he had sent me that message uh, that he needed to reschedule it, I was like, oh, thank goodness. And honestly, my question to myself was, did I actually manifest that? Or did he pick up on my energy? that, uh, you know, we were not in alignment for that day. Well, we actually did the show today and he had mentioned that, you know, he lives in the UK and when you make an arrangement, he was kind of brought up this way that when you make an appointment or an arrangement, you just don't cancel it. You power through it. And that actually goes against the grain of going with the flow. So, you know, had we done that show Two weeks ago, when we were both feeling drained and kind of out of sorts, would the energy had been the same or the message had been the same as it was today when we were both feeling grounded and feeling much more relaxed? I don't know. And that's a really good question to ask ourselves. When we feel like we're forcing something, we've got to look at the energy behind it. And oftentimes when we're forcing something, there's an energy of frustration or even anger, uh, could even be bitterness because it's something that we don't necessarily want to do. And that energy can uh, transfer from us to the people listening, to the people we come in contact with. And so when we sit back and we actually go with the flow, uh, it's a much more less resistant energy and it allows things to flow into our life with ease and grace. And so You know, as a society, we are so programmed to want to see the entire picture, the entire story, the entire book all at one time. Uh, You know, there's that old saying that we don't need to see the whole staircase. We just need to take the first step. And oftentimes, letting go of the need to know is a very, very advanced spiritual practice that many of us are beginning to learn how to master. And I'll tell you, it's not easy at times, but then there are times when I am in alignment and I'm in the flow state 
And I'm like, wow, that that just dropped in my lap or that phone call came through at the perfect time. Or I had no idea I would be getting that email and that person would be contacting me. You know, you could work really hard to make that connection. And then when you're in alignment, it just automatically happens because you are in the right frequency or the right vibration. And so, you know, our desire for understanding to have everything all make sense uh, you know, can kind of come with that unease or that fear of not um, knowing what's going to happen, that fear of the unknown. And that can cause a lot of stress on us. But if we actually sit back and trust and uh, just expect good things to come our way, then they will come our way more and more often. And so, you know, like I said, the, the human mind wants everything to kind of fit into this perfect little book or this perfect little puzzle and, you know, already kind of there, kind of there for us to kind of pick off the shelf and read through it and know exactly what we are supposed to do, where we're meant to be, how we're supposed to live our lives. But the reality of it is, is how boring is that? How boring is it if we are born here on earth and someone hands us a book and we know exactly every single thing that's going to happen? I mean, that's no fun at all. I mean, you know, think of those old Mad Libs books uh, where there were certain words in there where you got to, uh, you know, add different uh, nouns, different verbs, and how every single time you read the book, it was a different experience, a different adventure. And so we really need to look at living our lives a little bit more like Mad Libs, <laughs> being able to understand that we do create our reality. And part of creating that reality is knowing when we are in alignment. And for me, oftentimes I can feel and sense when I'm in alignment. Things seem to attract to me with ease. My body feels very relaxed and at peace. My mind is balanced. Uh, I feel harmonized in everything that I'm doing. And I just have this deep sense of knowing that everything is working out for me. And, you know, when we do that and we are in the flow state, our nervous system relaxes and it gets to a point where it's much calmer and we can definitely stand in our purpose a lot easier when we are in the flow state and when we are in alignment because we do have that clarity of what it is that we are meant to be doing. But it, for example, I think of the analogy, if there's a vehicle or a car, all right, and it's out of alignment, what does it do? It's kind of pulling to one side. And what are we doing? We're pulling to the other side while we're driving. We're overcompensating for the misalignment. But then when we take the car in, uh, you know, and maybe we've been used to that for a long time. We've been used to driving where we've had to pull ourselves back into alignment all the time. And then that becomes normal. But then we take the car in to uh, have it serviced and it gets put back into alignment and we get back into the car and we realize that it's driving perfectly straight. We could literally take our hands off the wheel and it would still drive straight and it would drive with ease where we aren't having to um, pull it into alignment. And so that's very similar to our lives. Oftentimes we might be out of alignment and we are trying to force things to happen rather than just kind of, uh, you know, servicing ourselves, whether that be through self-care or meditation, uh, you know, spending some time in nature bringing ourselves back into alignment where then we can move forward on our path much easier and much grace and much more gracefully. And so, you know, just really sensing it in your body. I think this is where we tap into our intuition, into our intuitive gifts and having a deeper understanding of what it feels like when we are in alignment and when we are out of alignment, when we are in clarity and when we are out of clarity and all of us know that we all sense it because majority of our lives, we've probably felt like we're out of alignment. You know, many of us have, and when we're in alignment, gosh, it just feels amazing. Things flow, uh, to you very easily, the right people come into your path, the right experiences, the right opportunities. And gosh, it just feels so good when you are in alignment and, you know, just understanding that in order for us to really live our lives, you know, along this path of having a much more um, free flowing storybook, so to speak, we have to work through these stories of our inner child. So that way we can 
learn to see ourselves in a much deeper way, a much um, uh, more discerning way. Because oftentimes these storybooks that we are reading for ourselves were created at a very young age and they could have been handed down from our parents. It's like, here's the book of my life. And then they hand it to us and say, here's the book of your life. And these could be outdated stories that we're continually telling ourselves. And so now many of us are getting, you know, you know, later in our life. And we're like, I don't want to read that story anymore. I don't want to share that story anymore. I want to create a new story and I want to live a life that is in alignment with me and not in alignment with others uh, that I've been living my whole life. And so just really uh, not discounting the emotions that come up to the surface but just really having a deeper understanding that some of these emotions that come to the surface are meant to be, um, you know, kind of shine some light on and are meant to be healed. And we can move through those emotions of always having to chase after things or always having to feel like I have to go get it. Uh, and versus just kind of sitting back and aligning ourselves vibrationally, uh, and allowing it to just flow very easily into our lives. And so, you know, just ask yourself, when are some times that you've recognized that you are in alignment or that you have clarity in your life? And what were you doing at that time? You know, what was your frequency? Were you in a state of relaxation? Were you in a state of joy? Were you in a state of bliss? Uh, what was it when you recognized that things were flowing to you with ease and grace? And then on the flip side, take a look at the times when things weren't, when you just felt like round peg, square hole, you know, you were just like, oh, nothing is working out for me. What is happening? Ask yourself, how did you feel at that time? Were you stressed out? Were you burnt out? Were you frustrated? Were you angry? Uh, did you have pain in your body? You know, what were some of the things that were going on? And just really reflecting on those times, uh, you know, when you felt very strongly in alignment and very strongly out of alignment and just letting some of those things go and recognizing them for what they are, because our emotions are our biggest teachers. They're, there are partners, you know, in this, in this thing, this game we call life. And they're here to, to, to speak to us and to tell us that, you know, the little storybook dramas that we've been playing out our entire life, they don't have to be played out forever. They can stop now. We just have to consciously be aware of it and allow ourselves to move through, you know, and let those emotions move through us. And then we can rewrite our story. We can, you know, put that book down and completely create a new book. And we can be very flexible with that book and allow ourselves to be uh, much more relaxed within our nervous system and allow uh, those emotions to, to flow through much more easier. And uh, we can uh, kind of realize where some of those reactions in our old storybook, you know, took place and were they created in our childhood? Were they created in a relationship that was toxic? Were they created, uh, you know, in some of the belief systems that we have picked up throughout our entire life. And so, you know, I really just encourage you to, uh, you know, let go of the need to know, let go of that need to read your entire storybook all in one setting <laughs> and open yourself up to the unknown and really just kind of lean into it. And I know that can be really scary because for me, uh, I've gone through some pretty significant changes in my life over the last three to four years, uh, quitting my corporate job, moving across the country, starting a new business, and just really leaning into some things that were scary for me, you know, at the time. But I look back at the last four years and I have been taken care of the entire time. I have been taken care of. And that's what we really need to trust. We need to trust. And if you have childhood belief systems that say that you're not taken care of, then those are some things you might want to shine some light on and you might want to address because, you know, what is arising out of those insecurities or those um, feelings of unworthiness or uh, uh, lack of trust can really play into how we can lean into the unknown and how we can have a deeper understanding and a deeper um, faith, so to speak, of trusting that uh, the universe, source, God, higher power, creator, whatever it may be, will 
automatically align you with what is best for you based off of your frequency and your vibration. So it's like, we've got to kind of remind ourselves on a subconscious level that we do have these deep core belief patterns that may not be serving us anymore. And, uh, if we are in that, that pattern or that loop of, we have to chase things or we have to control things, or we have to, you know, force things to get things done, then all that's doing is creating more en- resistance in our energetic field, which is actually blocking what it truly is that we want and what we desire. So just, you know, surrendering to it, allowing ourselves to flow. And even if, you know, you have to do this in baby steps, and this is what I did. It was like, okay, I can't surrender so much in this area of my life, but I can surrender over here and I can go with the flow over here. And once you start to see the validation of things attracting to you in a certain area of your life, then it will give you confidence to be able to step out into another area of your life and surrender to that flow as well. So um, I send you all so much uplifting energy. I hope that this was a valuable um, kind of uh, talk. It was some information that was coming through to me that I have been uh, working through myself. And uh, I thought that I would just take a few moments here to share it all with you. So Uh, I look forward to sharing more with you all soon. Take care. You deserve to navigate your life as an empath in alignment with health, happiness, and abundance. To learn more about the services that I provide, including Beyond Quantum Healing Hypnosis, EFT Tapping, and the Emotion Code, visit my website at www.thesoulcafe.org.